All right, the recording should be on. Welcome everybody. Let's see if I can make these little places go away. Here we go. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, the bit.ly for the presentation is right here. It's also been dropped in chat and can be dropped in chat again. I will be using two screens, so you will see me looking back and forth. Um, I am really excited you're here today. So let's get started. So this is the Multilingual Learner Title III Program Quality Beginning of Year Session. We want to start this year off right for our multilingual learner success. You see our hashtag NCMLs and also again the bit.ly for today's presentation. So you'll have access to everything I'm showing you in the slides. Um, we will be toggling back and forth on some things today. So some of the slides we won't necessarily be looking at together. They're more of placeholders, uh, just in case technology doesn't work, or so you can go back and look at those slides. So in case you don't know who I am, I am Ivana Manthor Anderson. I am on the ML program quality side, serving the West. As you know, Zatley Stocks has um, moved on to another position. We're so excited for her, and but we miss her greatly, and we are looking forward to a new person coming soon. With us today, we also have our ML EL data and Title III compliance people. Susan, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Thanks, Ivana. I am happy to be joining you. I see some faces of people who were with me and Marshall yesterday. Thanks so much for giving us your time. It's so important that we all um, start the year off on the same page. Absolutely. Oh, no, I sound like Marshall. Absolutely. Speaking of absolutely Marshall. <laughs> well, at least I'm rubbing off somewhat, right? <laughs> I'm Marshall Foster, and I'm glad you're here today. I'm one of the four ML, EL, data, Title Three compliance, program quality people here. We, do, we just do everything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And um, we are in the Office of Academic Standards and our leadership. We have uh, Dr. Christy Day, who is our director, and Dr. Dr. Stacy Daniel, who has been out on maternity leave, but is coming back to join us soon. So we're very excited to see lots of baby pictures and to have her back on board. So um, we just wanted to show you how we have the state split up at this time. I am representing the western half of the state. New person, formerly Zatley, was representing the eastern part of the state. Um, we may renegotiate this when we have someone new on staff, but right now, everyone can call me. Um, and anytime everyone can call me, we are happy to work with everyone, but we divide the state up just so that we can get to know you better. Um, and as you see at the top of the page, it says connect with uh, program quality. And when we get to one of our questions in just a minute, you'll find that my one word response, to what I want to get out of today is to connect, to connect with you all. So again, I will try to have my camera on and see how it works um, with our bandwidth. So I am going to see if I can launch this poll, open poll. You should be able to see on your screen a poll to ask you where are you joining us from today. Now, the current map doesn't have the numbers on it, but I included the numbers um, for the locations over here. Let's see if we've got some people coming in to let me know where you are from. Is the poll working? Are you seeing it on your screen? Oh, good. Now some people are coming in. Seeing the poll on your screen. It will be open for another minute and 30 seconds. You should also see the question um, where. In addition to where in the state are you coming from, I believe you will also see the other two questions. What is your role? And in one word, what do you hope to get from today? I know that's hard for us as language people. Give you a little bit of time. About half of you have finished. That's great. Please keep adding your responses. Have about 40 seconds left. If everybody gets finished, I will go ahead and close the poll. Since we have six people still in progress, 26% not started. If you're with us, we really do want to hear your thoughts. 
Um, some people could not answer number three. Some cannot see the poll. Thank you for letting me know. And thank you for those who are just going ahead and putting it in the chat box. Again, I am working off two screens, so you'll see me looking back and forth. There's about 11 seconds left on the poll itself. And again, if you cannot get into the poll, uh, please feel free. We've got to connect ideas. Great. So let's see if it shows up for you all. Poll results share with attendees. All right, do you guys see the poll results? Anybody? I do, Ivana. Okay, great. So I'm having to scroll in a small box, so I may need some help. It looks like we have the most people coming from no answer. <laughs> Nobody from outside of NC. I always like to put that one in there because you never know. Um, and it looks like North Central has the largest representation right now, but we really are representing the entire state. So thank you so much. Most of you indicate that you are ML coordinators. Some of you lead teachers, some of you ESL teachers, some of you um, other, and many of you may have clicked more than one box on that one. That one did offer more than one um, opportunity. And then um, one word, I am not seeing the results to that. So is that showing up anywhere on the screen? Maybe not. All right. Well, we always know that our polls are um, an interesting try. So if you would just go to the chat box and type in your one word, we have some already. We have ideas, connect, support. Um, go ahead and add knowledge, updates, ideas. Well, good. I'm on a roll so far because we're going to do all of those things. Anything else you want to put in the chat box? Ideas and updates. Some of you are coordinators and teachers. Thank you. Support. Awesome. So we did schedule this for two hours. We may not take that whole amount of time, but again, connecting is important. And I want to make sure we have the opportunity to do some interaction um, in our PQ session today. So what are we going to do? Today? We are going to first talk about our why, our vision, and then we're going to walk through the MLPQ library looking at the different sections, the overview, the guidance and legislation, program quality, charter schools and communication. And most importantly, we're going to give you some time to play with it and then ask for your insights. We'll do a little bit of discussion online and then there'll be a survey at the end asking you for your thoughts and insights. So you may be familiar with our updated vision that we are dedicated to growing the success of our multilingual learners in several different ways. And one is by sustaining the statewide implementation of the ELD standards. And all of you know that entails a number of different things. In addition to the standards, we want to make sure that we're ensuring program compliance and that we're coordinating our efforts and our resources to build stakeholder capacity. Building capacity is an extremely important part of what we do. Um, as you've already heard, when we were doing our introductions, ELML, um, in March of 2021, we shifted and we're using English learners still for policy and legislation purposes, uh, because that's what's still in the policy and legislation. And we're using multilingual learners for all of our other purposes. And you can see the letter and also the video explains that. If anyone here is new and you have a question about that, please just let us know. I'm pausing to see if there are any questions. Oh, we got collaborate is one of our words. Absolutely collaborate. Marshall, you have really messed me up with absolutely. <laughs> so, Susan, um, if you're able to jump in here and, and talk a little bit about the multi multilingual learner compliance library, we would love <laughs> Easy to for you plug. to say. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ivana. Um, I'm seeing so many familiar names on your session today. So most everybody hopefully knows about our um, multilingual learner compliance library. Um, we have uh, placed the link on this slide for you. When you go into the library, you will hopefully see everything that you need or almost everything that you need on the compliance side of um, the program. We also have our new 
Poem Language Survey in PowerSchool linked on this slide as well. That link in the star will take you directly to the Home Language Survey guidance in the Compliance Library. Thanks. And Susan, for letting thank you for all the work you did to get that Home Language Survey in PowerSchool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> if you did not get to attend one of those sessions, you really did miss out. I love the way that Marshall and Susan really tailored the presentations to um, different groups. This particular presentation, we're only doing one time right now. Um, you probably saw that in the uh, in the information, and that is because we are waiting on my partner in crime to join us. Um, and we also want to hear from you. Where do you want to go deeper? Where do you want more? So we're going to do this one one time, and then we will follow up based on your feedback. So we are very excited to share with you brand new and in draft form. Um, if you attend Marshall and Susan's, they gave the disclaimer. It's not finished. It's not done. Many thanks to Zatley Stocks for getting this started before she left. There are some things that are a little outdated already because it got started last school year and we're gonna be working on updating them, but we didn't want to wait any longer to share this with you all. So the link to this is on your slide. I believe it's also gonna be placed in the chat box. The Multilingual Learner Program Quality Library. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump to the actual library. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are numerous slides. Um, we'll jump back to some of those slides, but most of the first slides are placeholders in case our technology didn't work. One thing for you to know is that you can access the content in any order just by clicking on the icons. Some of the icons like the WIDA Professional Development, the ELD Support Team and the ML Teacher Network, those are actually under program quality, but we know that we don't want people to have to search for things. And so we put some things individually, as well as when we go through the Canvas course, you'll see how they are in that section. Just some things I want you to think about as we go through the presentation, because at the end, we're gonna let you explore. Don't explore while I'm talking. I know some of you will, cause I would be the one doing that, but we're gonna give you time to explore and then ask you what needs to be different. What is missing? What needs to be changed? Because this is for all of us and we wanna make sure that it works for you. Let's see if I can toggle correctly. Probably not. Oh, it doesn't wanna give it to me. And get to the actual course. All right, we'll do it this way. And I'm keeping an eye on the chat box in case anyone has questions. You should be able to click the link and get in already, but feel free to just watch what we are doing. So when you come into the Canvas modules, you will see what you saw on the screen there. The opportunity to click and then go through step by step and also to um, go to individual sections. If someone could drop the presentation link into the chat box again, that would be great. So I'm gonna click on the overview. So many of you may have worked with Canvas, but some of you may have not. Once you get in, there's a return to home page, and then there's the next. So we're just gonna go straight to next. And you will see a number of different resources, one of them being the acronyms and terms. So for new people, or for maybe when you're talking to your administrators, you might want to be able to give them a list of terms. So we have the glossary, available to you here. We also have that reminder that we've moved from just using EL to the combination of ML-EL. So that is available for you on this page. We also have information just about how to navigate Canvas. We get into the program quality consultants. I'm looking forward again to updating that particular piece. And any endless serves. This is extremely important. And I don't know if Susan or Marshall want to jump in and talk about just how important this is. Um, anybody want to jump in and go deeper than I might? Nope. I'm happy to do it. I was waiting for Marshall to jump in. <laughs> um, hopefully you all have um, updated or are listed in the North Carolina Eddy directory. Um, if you're not, it would be so great if your district could list you as the ML coordinators um, or lead teachers or whatever your role is. I don't know, they're so different from district, uh, sorry, PSU to PSU. 
Um, and then we have, of course, our private uh, listserv, and you um, are able to join that private listserv by completing the Qualtrics survey. If you've had any changes to your uh, teams in your PSUs, by all means, please update that Qualtrics survey so that you can be included in our private listserv. And then, of course, the uh, teacher Teachers of ML Students is a public listserv, and you join it by following the steps in the screen. And I do believe that that link she is talking about for the private listserv is actually on the slide. So that's one of the examples of a place where we need to do some updates. But I do believe it's that also in the ML timeline, Ivana. They can Perfect. go into the ML timeline, and that Qualtrics survey is linked there. Perfect. Thank you. So this is extremely important for us to have you and Eddie so that we know who we're talking to. And it's extremely important to have you on the private listserv because very important information goes out that way. And we love to have you on the other ones as well. Awesome. So as we continue to go through, we come into the next section, which is guidance and legislation. A lot of times we get emails asking us, well, what's the law? Where does this say this? How do we know what this is? And so this has been pulled together to try to give you a one-stop shop for the federal guidance and the state policy and legislation. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it today. Um, we are gonna go through it quickly and show you what is here. If you have questions, we will attempt to answer them, uh, but this is really powerful the way this has been brought together. And again, thank you to Zatley Stocks for the work that has been done on here. So starting with the very basics, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, not only do you have some verbiage explaining things, but there are some videos that have been pulled in to help um, go through the information to help with understanding. Again, for me, when I was in the district, this would have been such a powerful tool when someone asked me a question, not only to be able to answer the question, but to have documentation, to have videos, to have information at my fingertips. Um, everything is footnoted, and you can see where things were retrieved. Also, moving into the providing meaningful access, um, there's some great posters that have been provided. These were created in-house to go through some of the um, main points to make things easier to see. You can download these posters. So if this is information that you think would be helpful to have up in your office or to share um, with your teachers to have in their classrooms, these posters are downloadable and you can print them yourself. After the main information, many of our pages have an expand your knowledge option. So if you want to go deeper than we have done um, in what we're providing, you have some hyperlinks and some places that you could go to continue to deepen your knowledge. When you have a chance to play with this and go through it again, please let us know if there's something you feel is missing or something that we could enhance. Or something maybe we make it more simple. So again, continuing to go through the legislation. Uh, looking at the Equal Education Opportunities Act, looking at the Office of Civil Rights with our minority students. Again, a poster that you can download that gives um, some very specific guidance. All of the hyperlinks and um, citations that you'll need to answer many of the questions that you may get, as well as again, and expand your knowledge. Continuing with court rulings, Lau versus Nichols, videos, Castaneda versus Picard, all of the court cases that we tend to have an understanding of that we know are the foundation of the work that we do, uh, but that our administrators may not be aware of, or that we might not be able to articulate or immediately find the link to, those are all here for you. Sorry. Also, ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. I get another poster for your use. English learner definitions. Um, this is what you will often see in the compliance work, especially when we're working with our immigrants and our headcounts. It's a long section. <laughs> Right. Speaking of immigrants, the student youth and definition. So you'll see there's some overlap with some of the um, information that we shared on the compliance side. And we think that's important to have that overlap um, so that if you're looking in one place, that information's there. And if you're looking in the other place, you're going to find it there as well. 
Um, included here are the toolkits and I'll um, have some exciting news when we get a little bit further along about some updates to some of our toolkits that we will be updating here as well. So if you haven't had a chance to use these toolkits, um, fantastic resources right here at your fingertips. The Dear Colleague Letter has tons of information that's useful. The English Learner Toolkit has been updated and that's in the PowerPoint as well. I need to make sure that we have it updated here. I apologize for the pop-ups. I did not turn that off. And now we get to the state legislation. So with the federal legislation, sometimes there are things in state guidance, state legislation. There are also things in federal. Um, that's another question we often get is where do you find this? Is this a state thing? Is this a federal thing? So we also move into the State Board of Education information. The policies, again, with another great poster that you can download so that you know where the policies are that we are working with. And I think there's one or two more pages. So that is it on the legislation piece. So I'm going to pause there. I know we're going to go in a little while and take time to actually work through this and, and walk through it together. But I'd just like to get some initial reactions. What are your thoughts? Does it seem like we've covered things? I see some people with cameras on. Feel free to unmute yourself. But what are your thoughts? I'll see if I can flip back over here. What are your thoughts about the guidance and legislation portion of our new resource? Hi, this is Luann from Surrey County, and I am thrilled about it because it has the great alignment to your PQR. So when you're looking into your PQR, and you're finding areas in which you need to strengthen. You have that ML guidance and legislation right there that if you need to talk to people in the senior cabinet or in different aspects of your district, you now have a one stop shop to get that information to support why we need to do things. Awesome. And that's what we're hoping for. So as you're working with that PQR, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, as you're working with that PQR, if you see other things that you think we've missed or we need to add additional information to or make something more clear, please do let us know. And I apologize, I do not know how to turn that off. We've got a couple of things coming into the chat box. Um, let me scroll up. I love it, really helpful. Good, the posters are great. Love it, super informative. I love the fact that everything is in one place. I will tell you that as each new person has come in and before me, we've all tried to create handbooks and we get partially into it and then other things kind of take us away from it. Um, and so we're almost there. Like we are not gonna wait until it's perfect to get it out there. So I am so glad that you guys like it. And yes, that is a great point, um, Luann. Thank you for bringing it in. Finding everything in one place, well organized. I'm really excited about the posters. I, I thought that was a really awesome um, extra that exactly built for us by creating those posters. When I first saw them, I thought that they were professionally done and that she had found them online somewhere. So really nice with the graphics. Yeah, as I say, I'm going to be using it all the time. <laughs> yeah, with your profession, with your with your work. All right, let's see if I can somehow get back to yes. Okay, so, oh, we got some more coming in. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, fantastic. So again, there are slides that go through each of these pieces, um, but I think it's more powerful to go through it live. So the program quality introduction. So many things under program quality. Um, hopefully you can see it's kind of small type here, but it's also on your slide deck. So looking at the LIEP, looking at uh, the standards, looking at statewide initiatives, opportunities for networking and collaboration, and also available resources. So a lot of different things fall under program quality. And so as I showed you on the first page, everything like this is under program quality. Some of them have been pulled out to have individual tiles so you don't have to work through a module to find them. Um, and that's another thing I want your thoughts on. Does that help you or is it somehow confusing? So when we look at our LIEP types, again, if you were in Marshall and Susan's presentation, um, they shared the table that lists the different L LIEP types in North Carolina. In addition to that, we have some of the information from the Department of Education English Learner Toolkit. So pulling out specific parts that link to something that we are doing in North Carolina. 
but you also see some of that guidance included here. So when we're looking at our LIEP types in North Carolina, thinking about how you want to set up program. We know that sometimes LIEP is looked at as, oh, this is a compliance document. It has to be turned in with my Title III application. But in addition to that, or even it's really part of that, is we're looking at how are our programs being set up. And so often that LIEP comes through in the compliance manner, but then it's not trickling down to the districts. It's not trickling down to the teachers who are placing the students and working with the students. And so we want to continue to encourage you to look at that LIEP as a way to determine what your staffing's gonna be, to determine how are we really placing our students and servicing them, to if you're a low incidence um, state or if you're low incidence district, or school, having something prepared so that when those students do come, you're ready. So the LIEP can be such a powerful tool. And we have previous presentations where we've talked through that, um, that you are welcome to look at. And if you're not here, something I can go back and look at and say, oh, where are my previous presentations that might be useful for you? Marshall, did you want to say anything about LIEP before we jump into standards? I know you talked about it a long time in that other presentation. Yeah, so the LIEP, so uh, there's two submissions, uh, mandatory submissions. One is for those of you who are Title III subgrantees for the PRC 104, so that's your English learner headcount, right? And so that submission is submitted to me via email. Uh, you know, meaning your LIP using uh, hopefully the template. If you don't use the template, then uh, you need to make sure that you include the one piece that's in the template that's uh, that's different, and that is the Title III uh, supplemental piece, which asks, you know, how are you using your Title III funding to supplement uh, your basic program, uh, which is what you list above in your LIP, right? And so that deadline is that uh, your federal program director is going to want to submit your their consolidated application. <clears throat> for all of the federal funds that your PSU qualifies for. So if you qualify for Title I, II, III, and IV, that whole thing gets submitted at one time. Well, uh, they've been told that they, they're not allowed to submit until the LIP has been uh, submitted and approved, right? And so once that's done, uh, I send it back to them like I did nine of them, I think yesterday and the day before. Um, and so... Once they get that, they can then upload it uh, along with the other required documents into uh, the consolidated application platform, which is called CCIP. The second submission is those uh, for those of you who are charters, and it will be part of the performance framework uh, A5. And I worked with Joseph on that uh, earlier this week. He got it set up for us. Uh, the deadline for that is going to be the end of November so that it's after the EL headcount, because the guideline on that is if you have at least one EL that you need to then uh, submitted LIEP. Uh, if you're both uh, a subgrantee and a charter, then whatever you turn into me for the uh, subgrantee is what you would then just also submit um, into Epicenter uh, by that November 30th deadline. Uh, if you end up not having uh, any ELs at all, if you have zero, then that's there's a notation to put that in the narrative when you uh, submit uh, in Epicenter. And outside of that, uh, just want to thank. Uh, Ivana and Satley for the LIP types and the rubric and everything else that they always do. They're super wonderful. Thank you, Marshall. You're super wonderful too, doing all the compliance piece of the LIEP. So it's a lot of work. It's great stuff. So the standards, again, there are great presentations about using the ELD standards. We have the links here to the standards resource hub lots and lots of materials on the hub. If you're not familiar with the hub, in the time that we um, get to play with it, you can go in and uh, search it a little bit more. Let's see when I click the link, if I'm able to get back to where I wanna go. So the hub is also a, a Canvas resource. And when you get into the hub, you have tiles that you can navigate as well. You have information about how to use the hub. You have the, the standards themselves. And then going into the glossary, the crosswalk, the unpacking, the mapping, and also the parent caregiver. These are wonderful resources. We're not going to spend a lot of time going into them today. Uh, we do have previous presentations that we can share. And when we do the survey at the end and ask you, what do you want PD on? If you want to go more deeper into the hub, we certainly can. Um, looking at the PD, though, is a fantastic place to go for resources.
So we have the standards for leadership um, development sessions from the spring. And then we have some great content specific pieces. We have arts education, mathematics, social studies, science, and English language arts. We also have summer conference 2022, and then other webinars talking about the ELD SCOS. So we strongly encourage you to use this resource um, to go in and work with the different tools, but also to look at the PD that we already have. I'm going to pause there and first see if Marshall or Susan have anything they want me to highlight. And then I want to ask you guys, what have you used and how has it helped you? So first, Marshall or Susan, do you want to say anything about standards? I think I've been guiding people um, recently uh, towards helping them to uh, continue on their implementation plan for the, you know, their um, what's called in essence, you know, like the, the full implementation, you had initial implementation last year. And so a full implementation is like a three to five year window with an expectation date uh, that you have this fully implemented by, I think it's 2028 or 2029. Um, and so I've been pointing people towards the uh, standards based PD, which is what Bonham was just covering as well as the uh, resources, because we keep uh, on an ongoing basis adding to that. And so, um, that's just something to point out. Fantastic. Thank you. I would, I would also like to um, just say, if you're doing anything that's working or you've created mm -hmm. something, by all means, please feel free to share it with us. Tamara Coburn out of Winston-Salem has shared some amazing resources with us and has given us permission to share them with the state. So. If you're doing something really great, let us know because we'd love to highlight you. Fantastic. And we do have resources from WIDA, um, and then we can continue to build out these resources and have things from the districts as well. So pausing there, I'm not sure if Tamara's on with us or not this morning. Let's see if she is. Don't see Tamara. So anyone else want to share things that you are using this resource for not right not right oh, i can't talk this morning not going into right now so much something you've created or something new but i want to hear this resource are you using it how are you using it and if it has led to something that you've created by all means please tell us about that and i can't see many people's faces so i can't call on you but i can call on names of people that i know are doing great things if you don't volunteer How are you using this document? You don't even have to tell me more. Oh, I have, I love the crosswalk. So Mandy, if you wanna type or unmute and tell us what is it you love about the crosswalk? How is that helping you in your work with your teachers, with the students? It helped me like go from old standards to new standards. Okay. And so it was very helpful for me when I was trying to redo my LIEPs for the new year. Fantastic. So you see like in the screen I'm on right now, no revision from 2012, but then when you get into 2020, the WIDA can do philosophy and the five ELD standard statements. So being able to see where those changes were, especially since 2012 have been around for a while, right? So we were very, um, very comfortable with that particular version of the standards. Thank you. Anybody else? Let's see. Unpacking documents give very good in classroom examples of language use. Yes. And if Ivana can figure out how to navigate with this bar across the top of her screen, she will go to that for you. Ah, hold on one second. There we go. So do you want to say anything more, uh, Mandy, I mean Daniel, about the unpacking document? Yeah, that was something that I've been sharing with my ML teachers and that when we're working with uh, collaborating teachers, you know, we'll look at ML plans and be like, okay, level four uh, speaking, what does that actually look like? And it, it was really helpful in giving the in the classroom examples of what that level of um, domain of language is actually going to look like. And it fleshes out what that standard 
will look like in the students so we can have a better example of what we should be holding our ML students accountable for and what that next level push looks like. Fantastic. And for all of these documents, shout out to the DPI staff, both EL and content, as well as um, the people in the field that helped us create these documents. And so it's always um, helpful to us to hear how you're using it so that, that we can be aware that these things really are working. Ivana, this is Luann. We actually did uh, Surrey MLPD on the go's three minute or less PD for uh, parents families and also gen ed and EC teachers. So each ML specialist took one little bite from this and uh, did a screencast. And then we shared it with everyone because it's a great way for um, the principals to share it uh, during a staff meeting. So that way we know that we're informing people other than just our department about the standards and other things that's going on. And it's it's been really nice because now we have a library that if someone new comes in, they can go and learn about that aspect. Fantastic, thank you. And I've seen some of those and they really are bite-sized. Now, are those available to anyone or do they have to be someone working in your district? No, they're actually posted on uh, our surrey.k12.nc.us website. If you go to federal programs and go down to open that up, you will see MLPD on the go, and it's there for everyone to access, so anyone's welcome to look at it. Awesome, and if you wanna put all that in the chat, we will try to capture that and put that um, in the follow-up and maybe get it onto our website as well. Sure. Um, some people have just joined, if someone could put the link to the slides, I know it's on every slide, but I'm not on the slides right now, so it's not, um, not showing. So one or two more people about how are you using these resources for the standards. I've used them, they're great, awesome. I just wanna ask if anybody in here wears the arts hat because I have to tell you arts education jumped on this um, before we even finished the documents with the other content areas. And arts education put together a whole series. We have documents for dance, music, theater, arts, and visual arts. We have presentations that we did where we had the opportunity to hear from some people in the field who wear both hats. Um, Sylvia, I think you wear the arts hat. I might be wrong. Is it Sylvia? Anybody here wear the arts hat? Um, this is Stephanie from Green County Schools, and I do wear the heart arts hat this year um this has been a very useful document i think in our um programs that don't fall under the four core as seen in the state size they feel like they're left out or don't have these additional resources so we have i have shared these resources and we'll be digging into them more this year if you go back to the hub in our district we did use the mapping and the unpacking documents and we actually linked them into our curriculum maps so that core teachers could see that their standards are already connected and i will say dpi did a fantastic job with these documents for many years i was very frustrated with the whole we can do statements as that being our standards and so for me this has been really useful to help core teachers because core teachers are responsible for ELD standards to show them how it connects to their standards, but what it looks like in a classroom. So helping them build in those sentence frames and the turn and talks and, and how that we can make their instruction more robust for our students. And we're talking about multilingual students but in our district, as in many of yours, these strategies and standards help support all of our students because in the world they live in, um, they're struggling with academic language. So this is a great document and I appreciate all the work that you did with it. Thank you, Stephanie. And, and that's one of the things with the changes in the standards. We are all so excited that the language expectations 
look like the standards that we're used to in the content areas. And so, you know, with WIDA, those five standards have always stayed the same, the language for, the language for, the language for. But now with these language expectations broken out, having that dot nomenclature, having a grade or grade span, having a content area has really given us the opportunity to have that conversation and to build that collaboration with the content areas. So we at DPI have worked very hard um, if you were at our conference this year, in um, our standards session, we had uh, guest speakers from several of the content areas. We also had healthy schools doing a lunchtime presentation. So we are working to not only create these documents in collaboration with the content areas, but working to have these presentations that you saw throughout the year and working towards having even more interaction in our professional learning. So thank you so much for sharing all that. Uh, let's see, I just started to explore this site, but it's so comprehensive. Is everything I see on your screen accessible to me? Yes, yes, absolutely. Everything you see on the screen is available. Let's see if I can get back to. Oh, sorry, I'm having trouble navigating because the navigation bar is right across where all my tabs are. Just want to close that one. Let me see, we'll do it this way. So, yes, all of these things are available to you on this site. So when you go to the home tab and scroll down to these icons, you can click through all of these icons. So the glossary that you saw at the beginning of the um, document I was showing you was here, the crosswalk, the unpacking, mapping, and the parent caregiver guide, along with all of that PD and additional resources. Yes, all of this is available here. Thank you for asking, and I hope you enjoy exploring. All right, so again, within the library, you have the link to the hub. You can also go to that hub on your own and find a great number of resources. There is a bit.ly for that hub if you want to put that somewhere so that you can remember how to find it. Lots of great information about standards coming out. And again, when we ask you what you want more PD on, let us know. If you say you want more PD on standards, though, give us some real specifics so that we know what it is you're looking for. Are you looking for content? Are you looking for going deeper? Those different kinds of things. Any other questions in the question box before we go on? Let's see. In RSS, we took the different content area PD and created smaller chunks and offered them a CEU PD on our staff development days. Nice. Beth, I want to hear some more about that. That's fantastic. Do you want to unmute and say anything, Beth, or you want to just get in touch later? I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. Sorry. Um, so we use uh, Kite Learning as a platform for uh, internal uh, PD. So I. I pirated, <laughs> I, I borrowed <laughs> um, the different content areas. Like we have a school that is an A plus art school, and um, we also have um, you know a global school, et cetera. Anyway, so we took all that PD and we chunked it up so that um, if somebody wanted just to look at the ELA, um, they could go through and, and go. I sent them actually to the hub, and I told them what to do in the hub to do to get um, for like two hours worth of PD just to get an overview of it. And then they had to submit like a reflection of how they would use it or connect it to PSYOP and into their classroom. So that um, makes it pretty simple and, and you know, easy on my problem. end. So it's all about <laughs> PSYOP over here, you know. I know, that's why I said, it makes my PSYOP and my standards heart very happy. Yes, Thank so um, we are seeing a, 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 what we're really trying to tell people to use it for like in the classrooms, not necessarily not, not focusing on our ESL teachers because they get inundated with all of our read standard stuff, but the content teachers and general ed teachers. We really talk about how to, you know, we don't want to be like, it's another thing. Um, <laughs> so we talk about how when we're asking them to do language and content objectives that that mapping and crosswalk, et cetera, that that is the place to go. Like it tells you pretty much what your language and content objective core of that could be for when you're teaching that standard. So um, it is perfect for that. So when we do our PSYOP training here um, in district, um, that's what that's what they go to when they're talking about making their content and language objectives. So it's that's awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. And you are not stealing. We are title three <laughs> and everything we create 
we create. I said pirating. <laughs> That's not even pirating. It's not even pirating, right? Everything we do is created for you to use it. And it makes us happy when materials that we've created are being repurposed and used in a way that meets your needs in the district. And so, like Susan said, you know, let's collect some of those things and, and share them so that other people can pirate them as well. We are going to, we are going to move those to, um, to canvas over the next this school year, we're going to, we're transitioning away from kite. So we're going to pull it all out of kite and put it into canvas. So once I do that, because it is not our content, it's, it's everybody's content. Um, we can do, then do like, where you can do that creative Commons or whatever yep. to share it or put it into the go open. Perfect. See as well. Perfect. So. And, and we'll be talking about go open and see a little bit later and please feel free to jump in. Those of you that have used it much more than I, because again, that was sort of one of Zatley's projects. And so I love go open and see, but I don't know a lot about it. So when we get to it, those of you who have used it, please, please jump back in. I don't want this to be just me talking all day. All right. Language diversity in North Carolina. I want you to put a Y in the chat box. If you are familiar with the language diversity documents that we create annually, let's see some Y's in the chat box. The letter Y, if you have used and are familiar with this language diversity in North Carolina. Oh, we got a bunch of yeses. We got a no. Beth, you shouldn't say no. Now you're in trouble. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's okay to say no. We want to know who's using it. Great. So if you've said no, then this is definitely for you. Um, the language diversity briefing is something that's been around for a while. It was actually started because of a request from the legislature. Oh, gosh, a long time ago. And it has morphed and and um, changed some since then. And so, again, I'm going to put Susan on the spot if she wants to say anything about the document, how it's changed and the information that we're able to share. Well, it's really interesting that you bring that up because we are in the midst of um, revamping this to make it more useful. So if there's any information that you would like included on there that is not included, by all means, let us know. Um, we are trying to make it a more universal document that not just uh, world languages or um, ML Title III can use, but something that we can use uh, across all content. And thank you. And Susan does a lot of work on collecting this data and putting together the graphics and the layout. So thank you so much for the work you do on that. Um, so if you're not familiar with the language diversity briefing on our website, you not only have the link to the current one, but you have links to historical ones as well. And I think this is really powerful, especially for people who um, are doing research and are pulling data on North Carolina. This document gets used a lot outside of the state. Any comments? Looks great, Susan. We have any comments or questions before we move on? So for those of you who um, have not explored it before, please, please do look at it. It's not just talking about English learners. As Susan said, we're talking about our student population in general, in addition to our English learners. And you also have some great resources at the bottom for our dual language immersion, as well as um, the global languages endorsement, which is North Carolina seal of literacy. We'll be talking about that a little bit more in just a minute. Information on lingual folio, which we'll also talk about some. Um, but there's lots of great information and resources on that document. I don't see any other comments. Oops. All right, so speaking of the Global Languages Endorsement, the seal of biliteracy. Again, I'd like to see, you can do yes or no, who is working with the Global Languages Endorsement, North Carolina seal of biliteracy. You're aware of it, you're promoting it with your students, you know your district um, has has received the seal of biliteracy. I'm gonna go out to that one as well. I'm not sure if people started putting yeses or noes in the chat box yet for that, or if people are shy now that I picked on the noes earlier. Um, there we go. Okay, we're getting some in. So yeses and noes across the board. All right, so North Carolina, way back in 2013, the state board created a task force 
to determine how we can be more globally prepared as a state with our education. And so the report is linked on this page, Preparing Students for the World. And there were a number of um, findings or recommendations that came out of this report. And some of those recommendations included things like global languages endorsement. Also, there were great recommendations about dual language immersion being available across the state. So when you look at this page, you will see that there are things tied to global education for students, for educators, for schools, and for districts. And we know some of you have educators that have gotten the Global Educator Digital Badge. We know you have schools that have gotten the Global Ready schools, and a few of our districts have gotten the Global Ready districts. So you can uh, click on these and learn more about that. But I want to focus on the Global Languages Endorsement. Let's see, pursuing the GLE has been such a fulfilling experience for our MLs. Hannah, that's awesome. And I want to hear more about that from you. Let me talk about this a little bit more, but I definitely want to hear about that. People may need to know how to check for it in PowerSchool. True. So um, we will go to Susan on that in just a minute as well. The Global Languages Endorsement is North Carolina's seal of biliteracy. We were an early adopter of the seal of biliteracy, and we adopted it as a high school diploma endorsement. So states do this differently, but ours is a high school diploma endorsement, one of five. And so when a student meets the requirements, they then receive a seal on their um, diploma. And you can see here, there are opportunities here to go through and to get, um, look at the infographic. Let me pull that up. I'm just afraid I won't be able to toggle back when I pull things up. We have an infographic, which is on the slides in the slide deck, shows you what the requirements are for world languages, for English language arts. And currently, there is an additional requirement for our multilingual learners. This is a policy that we have been working on adapting since right before the pandemic hit, and we are continuing to work to try to get this changed to make the process for the global languages endorsement more equitable for all students. So when you see in world languages, you have a number of options. You can complete the four levels and get an unweighted GPA of 2.5 in all four levels of the world languages courses, or you have the opportunity to pass an approved external exam or to show, to demonstrate and get credit by demonstrated mastery. Right now with English language arts, you have to meet the um, high school requirement of getting at least a 2.5 GPA or higher in the four required courses. Uh, the ELs, in addition, have uh, a level three proficiency required on all four domains of the access testing. So we are hoping to make these two sides more parallel and have more options for all of our students to receive the Global Languages Endorsement. Because we have found, um, when we've drilled down into the data, that our multilingual learners, our ELs, are not receiving the um, Global Languages Endorsement at the rate we would like to see them receive it. So let me go back to this page and, oh good, Susan put some information in the chat box about um, how to do it. I just linked, I just linked them to the page. It, um, PSUs are, uh, do it differently in terms of what they, how they go through that process. But I linked them to that general page you're talking about, Ivana. Great. Um, and I'm not sure, I think we have another person asking for the link. Um, if you just put the link in the chat again for me for the presentation itself. Thank you. Um, Simone says it also helps motivate some of our high school LTELs to work harder on the access in order to qualify for it. Yes. And that is something um, that I think as we work on our messaging, I, we can do a better job from DPI and across the state of messaging for our multilingual learners, our ELs, um, of reasons to pass that test. I see that Janina has turned her camera on. Is that because she would like to say something? No, I'm no, just I'm switching, switching from my phone, phone to my computer. Okay, okay sorry. Um, let's see, Simone says, it's been very coveted in our district once we added graduation cords and sashes. That's awesome. And Hannah, did you want to unmute and say anything? Yes, I'd love to. Um, so one thing that we have realized in Pitt County Schools is that um, with our MLs, they clearly know another language. That's why they're with us. That's why they're MLs. Um, but they were not receiving any credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, what we were finding is that in our high schools, 
we are really struggling to staff our world language courses. And so in most of our high schools in Pitt County, um, we only have one, sometimes two world language teachers. And so with that amount of staff, you can only offer level one and level two. We're kind of hitting the bare minimum. Um, we're working hard to increase that course offering, but what you have is um, students not having the opportunity to get that level four in a world language under their belt because it's not even available. Um, and so what we've done in high schools where that's not possible, we have um, used the CDM process and used an assessment um, to give them credit for levels one, two, three, and four. And it's been really fun. The other uh, aspect of this is that in our high schools, we offer Spanish and we offer French. Well, what about our Arabic speaking MLs? They feel like this is not fair. There's no way I could ever earn a level four mm -hmm. of a world language course because my language is not offered. It's not a class at my high school. Um, and so we've really gotten into an, an advocacy mode where, where we've talked to scheduling and, and guidance counselors, uh, that front office staff to say, you know what, don't, don't force an ML who's already trying to learn English into a Spanish course mm -hmm. or into a French course or into a Japanese course. That's not fair. If they want to do that, great. But we were having a, a very large issue with our MLs who speak other languages having to essentially learn a third language for their world language requirement. Mm -hmm. So there are some um, assessments available to us, and uh, there's actually a, a page and a document I do not mind at all sharing um, with you guys on the chat of all the different assessments that your school system could look into and purchase to actually test these students in Arabic and Chinese Russian, there's just a very, very large list and through the CDM process and using outside assessments, we're able to award uh, language credit, world language mm -hmm. credit to many of our emails and it's not just a Spanish and French issue. Thank you, Hannah. And um, on this webpage, you have the GLE exam list. These are the exams that are approved by NCDPI to be used to get uh, the GLE. So that list that she's talking about is actually also available right here. Um, and when you do the GLE, it does have to be entered manually in PowerSchool. She also mentioned the CDM support. So here's the information for CDM. I also wanted to point out there is an FAQ. There's the guide for PowerSchool. And as she mentioned, Arabic. So we have um, given GLEs in Arabic in some languages that we don't teach in the state. You can see Persian is here. Uh, that is often done by demonstrative mastery or by testing. Also, if you're interested in, well, has my district received GLEs? There is data all the way back from 2015 um, for <coughs> received it. Uh, did you wanna say something, Marshall? Mm -mm, scoffing. <laughs> oh, okay, you're muted. <laughs> Thought maybe you wanted to say something. So there's information, um, and you will see that the data in the early years was not automated in power schools. So we had typically fewer recipients just because we didn't have all the data that we needed. So thank you guys for sharing that information about the global languages endorsement. At some point, we are going to put together um, a group to talk more about the global languages endorsement, what's being done already with our multilingual learners and um, what we could do to enhance and make it more equitable for them to receive. Awesome. And I love the graduation cords. There's all sorts of exciting things that people do um, in order to get people interested. I'm scrolling through the chat. Uh, foreign exchange students, pop me an email. Unless a lot of people have questions, include Susan and Marshall. Wow. Simone says this last year we awarded 531 high school world language credits to our MLs based on the Apple testing. It was a heavy lift, but the results were amazing. So, really honoring the languages that our students bring, you guys, you make me so excited to hear all that. Um, if Simone, if you have a test, you need something for, please send us an email, send it. Um, I'm no longer sitting as a, a co-lead for the GLE. Um, send it to Anne Marie and copy me. That would be great. All right. Awesome. So speaking of honoring languages, dual language immersion in North Carolina. 
if your district has dual language schools, will you type the language or languages in the chat box? We have eight different languages and my screen is really small, so you probably can't cheat, but do you know what the eight languages are? And if you don't, we'll go through them. Good. So, so far I'm seeing Chinese and Spanish, Spanish Mandarin are the, the districts uh, languages that you have. Anybody want to take a stab at all eight? And if you're just reading it off the screen, then oh well, you could still put them in there. Um, we are very excited in North Carolina. We have eight DLI languages across our two-way and one-way programs. Our two-way programs are the programs that are designed to focus on meeting the needs of our multilingual learners. Typically half of the people in the two-way programs speak the program language, and then the other half are native English speakers. That is the goal with that. We also in North Carolina have three one-way programs that are designed for Spanish speakers. Typically the one-way programs are native English speakers learning a second language. In our two-way programs, we have three languages. We have Chinese, English, and Urdu. We had the first Urdu dual language program in the country. We believe there's a second one out there now, but we had the very first um, program. So thank you for those that put in the chat box about the languages that you have in your districts. We want to see more and more programs uh, for our multilingual learners. We want to see programs that have started in elementary school, continuing to middle and high school. We have a number of districts that do that very well. Um, one of the committees that we have at DPI is the MLs in DLI committee. And on the slide in the presentation, there is a link to an application. So if you are working with multilingual learners and DLI programs in North Carolina, there's an application that is open until September 7th to join that committee. And I'll go back to that slide. Um, let's just do that now. Please close your eyes as I scroll. Maybe it's not. Okay, maybe it's not on the slide. So for the, it's, it's on another slide when we get to committees. Uh, there's the opportunity for you to join us on that committee. So dual language immersion, we have um, a directory where you can go in and see where all the programs are. You can see who the people are that are leading those programs so that you can contact them. If you already have a program and you want to learn more, or if you're wanting to start a program, you can see different aspects of those programs to determine who you might want to talk to. Last year, we had over 240 programs, just a little over 240. And as we go into this year, we know already that we have 260 DLI programs in 51 PSUs, and we have the eight program languages. So a couple years ago, we did launch um, a visual program directory. So the information in the spreadsheet loads up to this visual directory, and you have the opportunity to go through and make different graphics. If you have a program, again, or you want to start a program, you can make pie charts. You can make different things to show the impact of dual language immersion. So as you go through our, um, our library, you have the links to these different um, documents. We are really proud the 2021 canvas of DLI programs in the US public schools showed North Carolina is number five in the nation and we're number one in the Southeast. And so that has been noticed by the US Department of Education. They've actually called these five states together to advise them on a webinar series that they are planning. So we are very proud in North Carolina of our DLI work and programs. We're also very proud of the fact that we have three co-leads and that we work together across um, ML, World Languages, and ELA. And thank you for the hearts, whoever's popping them up there. So we are very, very proud of what we're doing in DLI. I'm going to pause and see if there are questions or comments about DLI in North Carolina. I know you guys are doing some great things out there. And you can see on the map how we're spread across the state. And all those green areas, we would love to have blue. So if you don't have a DLI program, we'd love to talk to you. Okay. Next is our professional development through the English language development support team. Many of you know our ELD support team, especially through our summer conference. 
So you will see information here that will link you to previous summer conferences. Uh, we're collecting the materials from this summer. Since we were live, there are not recordings, but you do have recordings from the previous conference. The ELD support team is a cadre of trainers from around the state. Some of them are still in the classroom, content classrooms and ESL classrooms. Some of them are administrators, and we even have people that retire and then come back and continue to work with the team. We, uh, with Stacy being out, we have not finalized our plans for this year on how the team will be deployed. In the past, we've had opportunities for districts to ask for specific trainings. Um, if there's something you really, really want, go ahead and send me an email and tell me what topic you want, when you think you want it, what the um, audience would be, things like that. So that as we plan, we will know that there's some interest out there. We are going to do some um, presentations that we're going to schedule. And often we will be looking for hosts for those presentations. And so um, also feel free to send me an email and let me know you'd be willing to be a host. Can you put a Y in the chat box if you attended our summer conference this year? We would love to see who joined us this year. Great, great, seeing a few. Um, I don't know if Sylvia is on, but we were hosted by Moore County. Um, and Sylvia was our great hostess that took care of us during the summer conference. Great, I'm seeing lots of yeses. Oh, we got a yes and it's great. And those of you who weren't able to attend, it is an annual event. This was our 10th annual um, summer conference. So it was very exciting to, to see something um, that we started 10 years ago uh, to survive and to last even through the pandemic. Awesome. Any comments, thoughts, questions about the ELD support team or the summer conference before we go on? Okay. I'm trying to work on my wait time. All right, professional learning opportunities through WIDA. If you were in the session with Marshall and Susan, you already know about the professional learning opportunities that are coming up this year. I'm gonna go back to my slide because I know that that's, that particular part of the um, library has not been updated. Um, I did get from Lou Ann that the summer conference format was great. It allowed us to be embedded in the subject and also DG enjoyed the conference. Thank you. So with our WIDA professional learning, we have a number of offerings that are in person this year. And we are very excited to be offering our first face-to-face -face WIDA Espanol. Uh, we did do a couple of WIDA Espanol hybrid offerings last year and got great feedback on the material. And so talking about our DLI programs and how we want to support them, we're thrilled to offer two, and we're combining them into one session. There are two one-day sessions combined into one session. You, you have to apply to attend both. Um, of course, you have to be uh, working in a DLI program with multilingual learners, and these, these two presentations will be presented predominantly in Spanish with some translanguaging. So my head will blow up by the end of the day because my Spanish is not very good, but we are so excited to have this offering. Um, this will be closing soon. You see the registration information link over on the right. Uh, registration will be closing soon for this as these uh, sessions are being offered at the end of September. So a shout out to um, Frank Porter Graham for being our host for these two sessions. We also have collaboration practices and potentialities, nurturing speaking growth, which is actually is a webinar, writing with multilingual learners in the elementary grades and writing with multilingual learners in the secondary grades. So again, I'm gonna take a risk and click on the link um, and you will see on the link, you have the information about what's being offered. So lots of details about the courses, the course descriptions, who the audience is, and then at the end, you have the location and also um, how to register. Each of these uh, different courses, you'll see if something is hybrid versus face-to-face. -face. Some of these registration is coming soon, uh, but you can see where the, I think that registration is out. I need to update that. Um, but you will see the information for all of these courses and when they are coming up and where they will be. You'll also see the information about the online self-paced sessions. And so we're going to, there's a slide with this on it, but we're going to use this document here so that you can be familiar with it. So you can see that Susan Waltz is your contact if, when you are working on trying to get set up. 
um, to in order to use the online self-paced courses, you do have to have um, a secure portal link, and there's information for how to do that as well. We have Marcia, the uh, excuse me, Ivana, I just yes, want to yeah. clarify. They only need to contact me if they have a team that they want to get to put in. Otherwise, they can go through the regular process. Thank you for clarifying that. So we Thank don't you. That box. <laughs> Uh, so we do have the information on all the different courses. Close your eyes if you get dizzy when I scroll. And then at the bottom, we have the frequently asked questions, which include how to get the login for the secure portal. So all that information is available for you right there. Let's see if I can go back to the right place. Um, let's go back here. So, you have a listing here of the self-paced courses. They do go through the end of August. So if you started something last year and you need to finish it to get your credit, you've got a few more days to get in there and get it done. You've probably received uh, reminders if you have a course that you started and didn't finish because at the end of August, they close out the, the program, they reset it, and then they open it for the next year, sometimes with new courses, uh, but it resets. So let's say you did everything but the last quiz. If you don't finish it by the end of August, it will be gone and you would have to start over if you wanna get credit for that course. So you can see in the courses, we have some content area courses in math and science. We have pre-K, we have things that are a little more general, like the home languages in the classroom and making language visible. Brand new course on newcomers. That's something people have been asking for and Lita has responded. We also have the course on long-term L's, social studies, and then uh, more general on the standards framework, the collaborative approach. Some of you may remember the coffee chats that we did at the very beginning of our installation work. They were built directly off of that collaborative approach course. So the e-learning is something every educator in North Carolina public schools has access to by getting that secure portal um, uh, registration. When you're working with your mathematics teachers, when you're working with your science teachers, when you're working with your social studies teachers, your ELA teachers, even your arts teachers, these courses can be so powerful. If you can have them watch one of these courses and then have a follow-up meeting, the course can set the baseline for them. So I'm really curious to know if any of you have used these e-learning courses in that way to set the baseline, whether it's for your ESL teachers or content teachers, and then to do follow-up, maybe a PLC um, with them. So I would love to hear from anybody. Feel free to unmute or type in the chat box. All right, we will keep going. If you think of something or you type, we will come back and hear what you have to say. So the PQR, um, again, this page needs to be filled out a little bit more. You heard Marshall talk extensively about the PQR in the previous trainings. We want to always look at that PQR from different angles. So although, although the PQR is not determined as a compliance tool, a lot of the things it talks about are very compliance oriented. And so we want to use the PQR to also really think about our program quality. And Luann talked about some of this earlier. How do you use that PQR to talk about program quality? And so if that's something that you would like to dig into a little bit more when we do the survey, we'd love for you to say that, to talk about you want more of the PQR, but what do you want specifically about the PQR? There's a whole series of presentations that Marshall did last year walking through the PQR with great guest speakers talking about how they're using it. Do we want to do more? Do we want to have a specific lens to so think about the PQR? Let's see what we've got in the comments. Okay, so you have not, Luann says she has not used it that way, but she can see this as a great blended learning choice board with follow up. Absolutely. Absolutely talking about the WIDA um, PL. So with the PQR, I don't, again, I don't want to get into the, um, all the pieces of it because we have resources that do that for you already. But if you're not familiar with the PQR, it is the Program Quality Review. And it is based off of a number of different things, but it has the indicators, the considerations, the evidence and actions and notes that you can go through. You have information on how to use it. 
And then you also have the ability to go to the specific sections. Those are hyperlinks. So when you look at an indicator, the indicator again can sound very compliancy. There are also links to some of the things that we were talking about earlier. When you're thinking about your considerations, really thinking about your program and how can you improve the quality by doing some of the things here. So we were just talking about the WIDA e-learning. And so when you're thinking about your training, here you're talking about training schedule for staff about identification processes, but what do you do after you've identified them? So thinking even past what you may find in a particular box before you get to that section of the PQR so that you're weaving those things together. And that's something that I think we can navigate together in further presentations if you're interested to. Um, and I don't know if Marshall or Susan want to jump in talking about the PQR from a programmatic quality perspective, not so much from looking at checking off those boxes of the things we want to make sure um, we're doing to help stay in compliance as well as have quality programs. Yeah, basically, I just um, tell people, you know, I was, I was just like what you're saying, it's self-evaluation tool, but it also helps you uh, in a manner of different ways. It does look compliancy, but if, if you are doing these things, then it, it does work towards the quality of your program. Um, and so if you're also doing them, then you're going to be fine when, whenever you do have a monitoring visit. Um, it's just, just the way it is. It works hand in hand, the way that we cross over in so many different areas. You know, we're in assessment, we're in, we're in academics, we're in curriculum, we're in compliance, you know, so, um, that's just the world we're in. Thank you. Oh, and there are redundancies in there. So as you go through and you see things as you're like, didn't I just see that? And once it's, yeah, there, there are slight differences, but that's where, you know, you can sort of build out, you know, on your, your, the quality. Um, and if you have feedback on things that, you know, you think could be added or removed or whatever, please feel free to share that. And Valerius, this is a great reflection tool. And it absolutely is. It will help you in so many different ways. And so we just want to make sure that um, if there's more you would like to do with it, you can see the presentations that have been done in the past and where we might want to go with it from there. She said, I think of it as a springboard to an improvement plan creation. Uh, Luann says it helps provide teeth for when our program is overlooked, focus on funding, staff, outreach, and support. Fantastic. Lots of different ways to use that tool. Those are the things we're talking about now and how, that's how we'll build out this page to make it more useful for you. So I'm going to go back to the presentation here. So again, there's a little bit more about the PQR in the presentation itself. And charter schools. So charter schools has its own tab to talk about the specific things that need to be done. Marshall talked a little bit about charter schools and how the LIEP process is a little bit different with Epicenter. Um, I'm not sure how many charters we have with us today. Just put a C in the chat if you are a charter with us today. So with our charter work, uh, we have really automated a lot of things. Great, welcome all you guys. We have um, automated a lot of things through Epicenter, which has really helped us as well as the Office of Charter Schools. Um, you will see different announcements coming out through the Office of Charter Schools, letting you know the things that are required um, for multilingual learner compliance. There's a list here of the things that all charter schools should do. And then um, the opportunity to really go a little bit deeper um, with the work together. All of us are available to help support our charter schools. This year, uh, Marshall has uh, taken the LIEP work and taken that under his compliance piece. So the work in Epicenter, um, if you're the one who works in Epicenter, you'll see Marshall's name instead of mine or Zatley's. So that's a little bit different, but we are all available to support our charters in your work. So again, with the LIEP, we want it to be something that your teachers are aware of, that it's being used to place your students. It's also being used to support your students. So any of my charters, do you have anything you'd like to say or ask um, about the work that we do? And, and, and again, when you do your survey, if there are other things you want us to build out on the charter, I think there's another page, but I may be wrong. Yes, so the performance framework for the charter schools that talks about all of the things uh, that charters are responsible for, including the A5EL component. But charter schools, we can build this section out um, in lots of different ways. So as we get to the survey, we'd love to hear from you and be specific that you want to see something on the charter page. 
But any comments or thoughts from our charter schools? So glad so many of you are here. It's wonderful. Quiet people today. Love the summer program. Thank you. All right, so here's where we go back um, to the home screen for just a minute, and then we will go back to the presentation because some of these pieces have not been built out yet. So again, on the home screen, you will see that some of these pieces, like the Weed of Professional Learning, was underneath program quality, but it also has its own um, icon so that you can get to it very quickly. Same with our teacher network and our collaborating and networking. Teacher network is under collaborating and networking, but we haven't finished building that out. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint to talk about communications. So someone mentioned Go Open NC already, and we have our ML Teachers Network and our communication channels. So with Go Open NC, we have the teacher network hashtag together for MLs, as well as the Lead Teachers Collaborative Groups. So if you have used Go Open NC, I would love to hear from you how you've used it and what benefits you have found from it, because it is a powerful tool that we are really not fully tapping into yet. So open mics. And I know a couple of you are on here, and if I don't hear from you, I will call names. Volunteers. Yep, Daniel, you're the one I was going to call out. So, Daniel, are you willing to unmute? <laughs> yeah, uh, so it is, I, I sell it as like a free teacher pay teacher for MLs, where there's so much teacher created content that is very specific to North Carolina. Uh, grade level and content areas uh, that ML teachers have put together, that collaborative teachers have put together. And uh, some of it, I mean, you can just, you know, take and use other things you can modify for your own needs. But if nothing else, it's given me some uh, great activity ideas to add to an existing lesson that just wasn't hitting the way it needed to. And um, yeah, there are, I was just going through it with my team yesterday. And I mean, there's, hundreds and hundreds of activities and lessons that are ready for anyone to tap into and make their own. Uh, I especially liked it for the um, the math because that's something that my ML team has very vocally said is not their strength. And having a lot of those lessons already in, in place uh, was a way for them to feel a lot more confident as they walk in and support students in those math classes. But yeah, it's it has everything. It's really a, a great, uh, asset for us. Thank you. And and one thing about it is, if you're an NC educator, you have access to the materials and the ability to rate something or make comments about something. Um, you also can download something and repurpose it and reload it. You can load your own materials as well. So it's a great interactive tool. If you're not um, an educator in North Carolina, you still have access to all the materials. So you can't um, upload, you can't um, collaborate with internally, but you can act have access to it. So we really are excited about what's been built in already. Uh, we're actually are creating a, a Go Open page for um, dual language immersion and also our um, institutes of higher education as part of our MLIHE committee um, are using Go Open for their pre-service teachers to see this great information. And then as they have, um, assignments in their courses, they will be uploading as well. So we're really excited about growing our uses on Go Open and see. Um, I've only used Go Open for AIG students, Christine, great. So explore um, the teacher network and also the lead teachers and um, pieces that are in there. And let's see, I think we have a slide. Yes, for each of those. Um, Susan, I believe, has been working with the teacher network. So if you want to jump in and tell them about the application, of course, Susan, I keep calling on her. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just a placeholder in the um, teacher network. Uh, we're waiting for uh, a new consultant to join our team. And so once Sotley left and uh, the new person starts, I'm just um, making sure that we do not lose the momentum of this amazing teacher network. This is um, the brainchild of Sotley and we have such a great 
team of professional leaders, uh, ESL teachers and stakeholders across the state, and they have done some amazing work. And as Daniel just pointed out, one of our people on the network, um, the NC Go Open is one of their babies, and they do a lot of work on the NC Go Open and working to uh, create resources and um, guidance for, not guidance, but resources for teachers, a lot of collaboration between uh, districts and charters um, by the teachers on that team. It's really amazing. There, if you have any standout teachers that you think would benefit from this experience, by all means, please share the application that is linked in this slide. Or if you're interested, please join, please apply. We're happy to have all sorts of of folks on this network. Daniel, have I left anything off? No, that's, uh, you hit all the major points. Okay, good. So we are excited to be accepting applications for that and we truly appreciate Susan uh, being our wonderful placeholder while we're waiting for our new team member. Want to keep going? Sure, of course. So our state partners for MLs, uh, it was renamed under our new leadership. It used to be the English Language Advisory Council, and now we are the state partnership for MLs. So this is a team of uh, knowledgeable and experienced uh, leaders across the state, and we have I think some of you were in our training uh, yesterday where we talked about the uh, out of state North Carolina guidance that came out of the SPMLs. Um, our home language survey guidance help uh, the SPML team worked on that. We've, we've got a lot of, we are working on a long term ELS um, guidance document and doing a round table on that this year. So they're doing a lot of really um, boots on the ground work, and we really appreciate um, all, everything that they do for us. They are both ESL teachers, ML uh, coordinators, as well as content. We have some administrators on that team, so there's a really strong mix of of um, folks that bring different perspectives to the tables. This year we have a, um, we're working on ECEL best practices. We're working on AIG, EL, or ML best practices. We're working with the AIG team at DPI to try and, and figure out ways that we can get more of our ML students identified as AIGs, and the SPML team is working on that as well. We have some roundtable discussions planned. Um, and Marshall, do you want to talk about the Teacher of the Year progress? Yeah, we are working on uh, Teacher of the Year. And so we're trying to piggyback on some of the programs that are already out there. Uh, we'd like to have um, something in place this year. And so we're hoping to be able to celebrate uh, the great uh, EL educators that we have out there. So lots of exciting work going on there. Uh, we also have the MTSS and MLs committee, and you know we get lots of questions about how do we work with our MLs? How what 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 is a like peer? Uh, lots of different things. So we are working on some guidance uh, through the MTSS and MLs, and we are working in collaboration with the IEBS um, office here at NCDPI. So thank you guys for sharing about that. We also have some ad hoc committees, the committees that are not under the SPML. I mentioned earlier the MLs and DLI. Here's where your application link is for that. It's a two-year term serving from 23 to 25. Um, the goals of the MLs and DLI committee is to bring greater awareness of the impact of DLI on MLs, also to grow and strengthen the focused programs and to increase collaboration among the pertinent entities. So again, if you are working with dual language immersion with our multilingual learners, if you know someone that you think would be good for that committee, it serves sort of as an advisory 
um, as the other does. With the emails and DLI, we um, recently did a survey and we are now working on um, a report of the survey about information we've ga gathered about our DLI programs and um, with recommendations of where we'd like to go in the future. So we don't have as many products um, in that yet as we do in some of the SPML work, but we are working toward that. I mentioned earlier an MLIHE committee. IHE is Institute of Higher Education. Those are our universities. Um, there's a link there to give you information about it. We're very excited. In our second year, we have 15 different universities, two professional organizations, and NCDPI all working together to improve educational uh, educator preparation related to our multilingual learners. And so um, that is actually something that we are getting to share um, up as the uh, Secretary of Education is looking for ways to encourage states to better educate um, all educators to work with multilingual learners. We're able to share some information about our IHG committee up the chain. So we're very excited about that. So any questions, any thoughts either about the SPML or about the ad hoc committees? Or anything you want to share? I know we have some of our committee leads um, on here. We, um, I host some of those, the, the two ad hoc committees and also the MTSS. I know that we have some committee leads on here. I don't know if Simone or Janina want to say anything about MTSS or if anyone from any of those other committees want to say anything and encourage others to get involved. Simone, you're still here. Chanina, either of you willing to say anything about the work? Yeah, I'm here and this is Simone. Um, I'm excited to keep working. I feel like we made some really good progress last year. And um, I know that there are some things that I'm able to use immediately um, within my district. You know, it, it will take a little bit longer for it to be DPI ready. Um, but I'd love to be a resource for people who are working through the MTSS program. Um, or not program, sorry, the process. <laughs> Um, and you come up with those with those questions that are that are difficult, especially if I'm get, it's going to escape me right now. Um, but we are starting to get lots of students who are newcomers who are coming to us with um, they are not IEPs, but they are a lot of the information that we would need for an IEP. And so navigating how to place them within the MTSS process. Um, based on information coming from other countries, it's it's been an interesting year in that respect. So I'm here to support that if anybody wants to talk about it. Thanks. So for the for the SPML committees, you do need to be on SPML in order to be a subcommittee member, um, or someone who has a lot to bring to the table can come and then be a guest and work with us as well. For the ad hoc committees, they are open to anyone. So there's a slight distinction between the two. But we appreciate all of you that are willing to help support these different things across the state. All right, our communication channels. We have our listservs. We'd love for you to join us. We have our Twitter handle. Uh, please do join us on our Twitter. And then we also have the Go Open NC groups that we have mentioned. What we'd like to do is give you a little bit of time to explore the program quality library. And then we are going to ask you what else should we add for that? But are we going to go ahead and give you, um, thank you, Christine. I know some people may need to sign off. So I'm going to go ahead and give you one more highlight under additional resources. Under additional resources, we do have information about Linguafolio, but I really want to show you the EL Family Toolkit. I just found out yesterday in another meeting that they have finished the EL Family Toolkit. So you may remember that the EL Family Toolkit had two chapters and the other chapters were yet to come. They have completed all the chapters and each of those chapters is now available in Arabic, Chinese, English, and Spanish. So when you go into the hyperlink, you will see where you can download the entire book booklet in one language, or you can go through chapter by chapter. So I want to make sure you're aware of these updates. They've made some updates to the newcomer toolkit as well. I've not been able to explore that. And then there's also, of course, the English language learner toolkit. 
So what I would love from you, and if you're not able to stay and um, explore now, I would love for you, after you've had a chance to explore, help us know what are some other things that we need to add to our library. And then, I apologize for scrolling, at the very end, we have some updates. I can tell I'm losing some people, you guys, so I'm gonna do this. We have some updates. I'm gonna go ahead and do those now. Quarterly meetings. So we will be doing quarterly meetings with our coordinators and lead stakeholders. August are our BOY meetings that we're doing now. We will have uh, one on October 10th from 12.30 to two. On January 17th, we are planning to host an all day in-person meeting and then April 18th go virtual again. So we will be sending more information out soon. Additional things that are ahead, uh, we have a stakeholder series, so we're looking at progress monitoring, continuous improvement plans, long-term ELs, newcomer programs, um, different guidance, different things that we can support you with ahead in 2022-23. So this is the piece I want you to see if you have to leave. I want to make sure you see this feedback opportunity. So we have a survey where we're asking you what else needs to be in our library. And what do you want to see in professional development? What are your needs for the year? We've gone through a lot of pieces very quickly today. And I know some of you are going to want to go more in depth in those pieces. And so this survey is very, very important uh, for you to give us that feedback. I'm hoping that you don't all have to jump off at this point, but I wanted to give you that information just in case. Because what I would really like to do now, I'm scrolling again, I apologize. What I would really like to do now is give you the opportunity to explore the program quality library and then for us to have a discussion about what else needs to be added. Like I know lingua folio is not there and lingua folio needs to be added, but I want to know from you what else needs to be added. So I would like to give you about eight minutes to explore that and then come back and have that conversation. So I've got 1035. I almost wanna give you 10 minutes. Let's go to 1045 and then we'll bring it back to that discussion and then wrap it up. So the link is in the chat. I mean, in the um, document here, if somebody could drop that in the chat as well. It says October 10th is the AIM conference in Raleigh. Are you doing it from there? So we will look at that. All right, so I am gonna go quiet for about eight or nine minutes, give you a chance to explore the program quality library and then come back together to get your feedback on what else needs to be in the program quality library and then to remind you about the survey for continued PL. Thank you, Susan, for putting that in there. Oh, okay, so that's the link to the presentation. Um, let me see if I can get the link to the actual program library. I think that might be it. I just put in the chat. Yes, that's it. Thanks. All right, I have started the recording back. Thank you all for taking time to explore. Um, I'm gonna leave the PowerPoint not all the way into um, slideshow mode so I can type. So as I said, I know one of the things that we need to do is add the Lingua Folio. Um, the Lingua Folio Professional Learning Booklet for 22-23 has not yet been updated because Zatley was the partner with um, Anne Marie for Lingua Folio, but there's lots of good information in there. The bit.ly is um, on the slide and there's also more information in the additional resources. So I know one of the things we need to add um, is the Lingua Folio. Uh, Luann, I believe it was, typed in the chat box that she wonders if a section for parent and family engagement, uh, ML parent outreach could be beneficial. So we have created things, we researched it, different people have done things, so that could be a good section. So thank you for that suggestion. 
Um, you can type in the chat box. You can also just open your mic and uh, give me your feedback so far. Uh, let me know what else we might want to add. What do you need that's not here? I see lots of names I recognize, but I know you have opinions. <laughs> so please share. Um, yes, the ELD support team definitely has to be updated. I'll put an update section down here. There's a, there's a number of things that need to be update, updated. Um, because again, this we had hoped to release this last year. And so thank you. Language and disability. So maybe just a section on EC and EL um, could be useful. There's some really good resources out there from CCSSO and things that we could put there. Onboarding documents to get new coordinators started since what they do is complex compared to the ML teacher. So, um, Luann, if you would unmute and tell me what you mean by onboarding documents. We have the timeline. Um, we have the two different libraries now. Tell me what you mean by onboarding documents. I think that's absolutely great. And, and I use them even as I am an experienced one, but just to have a folder that says, and, and I know you do it, but new coordinators, just a one stop shop that that they don't have to look multiple places to find something. It was just right there and they click, 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 I think would be helpful for new coordinators, especially um, trying to understand what is expected of them at a district level. They, they um, undoubtedly would get the ML aspect of it, the ELD standards, but that those other things that's kind of unique when you go into a coordinator position. So I think we'll talk about that offline because sitting at the state, I'm not sure exactly what all the unique things are because there's going to be different things in districts. So let's talk offline and talk about how we can take the materials we already have and maybe make it into a checklist or a one pager that people could then click to link to get to the things that you think they would need first. What do you think? I think that's great. And probably some new coordinators if they would just, uh, you know, uh, give their opinion about how they feel about that would be really crucial as well. All right, thank you. Oh, let's see anything else. We got checklist, great idea, especially in relation to the ML timeline. Okay, so Naomi, are you saying like maybe take the timeline and link it out to more instructions? Yes, when I took over also I was just an ML teacher and then became the coordinator, like a person trained me, but there's specific things that need to be done in a certain timeline. And yes, those, for example, notification letters, but you really need to start that earlier by time to meet that deadline and then have examples. So if you could do the timeline and then link documents that show, okay, this is what could be used. Um, this is when we suggest you start to make sure it gets sent out on time. Those types of things would be useful because you get all this information. It's overwhelming, but kind of to break it down in more of a, I wouldn't say weekly, but just, you know, this is important. Think of this starting at this time because it needs to be completed by this date. Um, for me, would be, would have been really useful and helpful because some things just got kind of overlooked when it was all given to me at once. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, Daniel said the timeline does exist. Marshall, can you drop the link for the timeline into the chat box? That would be great. Because I'm thinking that what you're talking about with new coordinators checklist and some of those things, they may need to be in the compliance library. Or we might need to have an external list that then links directly to the potential things. So that's a great idea. We will think about it. Um, Marshall, if you're still there, I know you may be looking for the link. Anybody else? What else do we need in the PQ library? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking for the link. Thank you. Um, one thing I thought of is we do need to link the compliance library and vice versa. I can't type publicly. So that again, when we're talking about one stop shop, if there's a link in each of the libraries to the other library, then you still kind of have a one stop shop. Yeah. 
Ivana, I, I will say that uh, I, I love the little choice boards where I could go in and click something. I, I personally, with Canva, I get frustrated when I have to hit next, 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 next at the bottom to find what I want. And I love a choice board. I love a graphic. That says, okay, I go there. There's my pages. I'm going to go there because if there's something specifically that I'm looking for, I I don't want to click down at the bottom and go next, 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 next. I want to know what I'm looking for, click on it, and be able to go there. So tell me, just so I understand, how is that different than this? That's what I love. But once I go into the document, mm -hmm. Then I'm having to click next, next, next to to look at everything, and it's great if it's your first time doing it, right? But, so we've got the home page that doesn't work for you because I'm trying to figure out even if we have a choice board. Well, I think it's the different. It's just the sections. Um, I, I almost like an outline for me, but that's just the way my brain works. Mm -hmm. No, no, and and I think that that. There could even be a separate document or something like that for people with different brain working. Because I am with you. I, and I guess that the the master one that has all the different. And I don't even know the one I'm talking about. The one that's the resource hub, the mm -hmm. ELD, the the hub. It has lots of blocks there on the front. So and it's delineated that I can just go to that and click and click and click. So for and me, so they don't connect. Is that what you're saying? Pardon? They don't connect continuously. They just are separate units. Yes. Yes. Okay. And some people may love being using the arrows at the bottom, especially if you're new, that may work because you get to look at each section. But for others, if I guess redundancy, are there multiple ways to get to the information rather than just one way? That that universal design thing. You just used my favorite word. <laughs> people at DP, I get tired of hearing it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think a few more things. Yep, Lori agrees with you. Marshall, thanks for dropping the link. All right. Well, as uh, what I'm hoping to do is to create a a um a survey, not a survey, a um like a comment survey, so that as people are using the um, library more and more, you'll have the opportunity to tell us to continue to tell us things that you need. So thank you, thank you for going through that. So we very quickly went through, thank you to the 33 of you that have held out. Uh, we quickly went through the resources. Um, if you have questions, please ask them. We had a question about the October 10th being virtual uh, during the AIM conference. We will go back and look at that. Uh, so here's the feedback that, that we really would like to get from you. So. Compliance webinar was hosted numerous times for different audiences. We hosted this one once because we're waiting for my partner in crime to come and help out. And also because it's program quality is such a broad topic and each of you come with different amounts of experience. So what we'd like to do is have you go and take the survey and the survey, some of the questions are required, some are not. So if it is a multiple choice or a scale, they're required. If it's an open-ended question, they're not required, although I would love for your feedback. So what we wanna know from you first is like, how long have you been a coordinator? Cause that helps us understand our audience. I also wanna know about this particular session. How useful was it? How informative was it? And then if you're willing, type some information about what did you get out of this? Why was this useful? What did you, what did you find? Um, so how are you gonna use the information? Then we also want to talk about each of the topics that we reviewed today and ask you about these, um, what do you wanna know more in depth then? So maybe you already know all this stuff and you don't want anything and you can put not interested for everything, you will not hurt my feelings. But if there's something you really, really want to see done, maybe you wanna go deeper in the LIEP. And remember, this is from the program quality lens that I'm asking you about in this chart, from the program quality lens. Um, so what are the things that are you're extremely interested in versus not interested in you have this continuum? You have a box where you have the opportunity to talk a little bit more about the topic. So maybe you want LIEP and you want to talk about compliance and program quality. Let me know that. So then how do you prefer to receive your professional learning? Uh, we've had people say, man, I just want something pre-recorded. I just want something on Canvas. I don't want to have to talk to anybody. And then we've got other people that are like, please, 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 let's do this live face-to-face. -face. So what kind of PLU are you 
PL, not PLU, extremely interested in versus not interested in, and what other ways might you want to receive your PL? Then also, what length of time do you prefer? Now, if you're like me, you ask a thousand questions. So what length of time do you prefer if the length of time is tied to a specific type of offering? Please go ahead and answer the chart the best you can, and then go ahead and give me some more information here so we can do our mixed method study and get quantitative and qualitative data from you guys. Um, and then any other comments that you have related to PQ, PQBOY or any additional professional learning you would like. So this will take you almost no time if you don't answer the open-ended questions. The open-ended questions are not required. There's no red spark star. The um, ones that are uh, choices, multiple choices are required. So I really hope you'll take the time um, to, to go through this and to give us your feedback to help us plan for the year. Can the access please be edited? Oh, okay. I thought I had it set right. I will check that. And are there other questions before we stop the recorder? I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see if I can change um, the settings. As soon as I figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Other questions? Other questions? Stop sharing. Other questions while I figure out how to make sure this is open for you because I thought it was. So Marshall, if you could keep an eye on the chat box for me. While I try to fix the survey, thank you, whoever jumped right on in there too. Appreciate that. No questions? We must have done an amazing job. Uh, the survey link in the chat again. Yep, Amazon is trying to make sure the survey is available. Okay, try it now. And see if it works, please. And drop us a message in the chat if it is working. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.